So mark your favorite hotel slash casino in Las Vegas now is four AAA diamond rated. Fancy, 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 fancy. Are you excited about that? <laughs> uh, I guess it's well deserved. I mean, we both like it a lot, and I haven't stayed in the rooms. You've stayed in the rooms, but you said they're they're pretty nice. Not the highest of ends, but you know what? What comparable properties is that hard to get? I'm not even really sure. It, it sounds impressive, and I know people strive for it, but you know, what other comparable casinos, uh, hotels in Vegas have it that is this like putting in the upper echelon compared for AAA or where are we at with this? Yeah, I mean, it's going to put it up there with uh, Bellagio's and Wins and those types of places, uh, certainly for full scale hotels. They try to go for five diamond within parts of Win and stuff like that. But for the main hotel, you're going to be looking at four diamond. Uh, six and a half percent of all AAA properties are for diamond so it is sort of exclusive um and i guess this is kind of people always wonder like what's four stars what's five stars depending on the country you're in and where you're at that could mean any sorts of things i've stayed in five star hotels in other countries that wouldn't be considered a three star hotel here so i feel like the triple a uh, ratings are a good way to sort of compare things definitely a big step up the kind of big thing i don't even know if we ever said circa's name we're talking about circa here by the way uh, but <laughs> this is the only four star or four diamond hotel in downtown Las Vegas. So it is a big Which deal I'm, for them. I'm kind of surprised the nugget never got it. Cause the, uh, you know, I put the nugget right up there in finishes and the room. I know their base rooms are a little bit older and not so nice, but like the rush tower and stuff and their spa tower suites are very beautiful. The main layout is nice. The pool area is, is beautiful. So I'm kind of surprised that was never like, up in that level uh i would put them comparable but i know i know circa everything's brand new so it helps out a lot there yeah and i know there's a huge list of criteria so i'm not sure with golden nugget if they're just not meeting it on certain levels or like you say because of their older towers aren't providing you know the level of service i know caesars back in the day used to have issues with getting rated um, because of their old towers which were really in bad shape so again, I'm not 100% sure on how that works, but Golden Nugget definitely doesn't have the rating. So it's a big win for Circa, for Derek Stevens. And, you know, it's it's a big win because they set out to build something of a higher quality than was on Fremont Street. And it seems like at least the industry is rewarding them on that. And certainly my experiences have been in line with that. So it's been important to them. Congratulations to Circa on the, on the four AAA Diamond. Uh, there's 1,718 of those hotels across North America, Mexico, Canada, stuff like that. So uh, pretty much all high-end hotels. You know, good to see Circa there. Good to see uh, it on the map. I wouldn't be surprised if Resorts World or at least, you know, parts of Resorts World get onto that list. As yeah, well. We, we, we'll leave it at parts. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, let's, let's talk about Now, we've talked about Main Street Station reopening on September 8th uh, at 6 a.m. and how much... Uh, the Hawaiians really love Las Vegas. They consider it the ninth island. And I saw this really cool kind of tweet that broke down some of the census information. And as of right now, there are more native Hawaiians slash Pacific Islanders in Clark County, Nevada at 20,572 than are in Maui County or Kauai County. So Las Vegas, uh, maybe we're the ninth island, but we're trying to kind of move our position up. So many Hawaiians here. The lady who checked me in at uh, at Conrad the other day at Resorts World, she had just moved here from Maui, worked in the hotels there. It kind of makes sense. They have a pretty robust tourism industry. So going from there to here, it kind of makes sense in that way. Uh, it also means we have tons of great Hawaiian food here, which I'm always appreciative of. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they don't just open some casinos on <laughs> Hawaii. I know they have a whole bunch of land laws and issues and building. Uh, it's like a whole thing, but... You would think they would do something like maybe somebody would bring in a boat casino or something. If people are flying that flight to go to Vegas, it's kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, that's kind of cool that they have areas that cater. You know, we have a lot of uh, there's a lot of casinos in Vegas that cater to the Asian market. And it's cool that Hawaii has a couple that cater to them, you know, because they they bring enough people in that they they want that feel. They want that place that they go to. And I love that they go there often and and take care of the casino and prop them up and. You know, we've we've talked about how downtown's done really well in gambling revenue and everything. And, uh, you know, Main Street was one of the ones that didn't open, which didn't make a lot of sense. But when you think about it, a lot of their people coming in come from Hawaii and travel restrictions to and from Hawaii have been kind of the toughest 
in in the U.S., so that plays a role in it for sure. And now maybe they just like either uh, it's time to you know poo or get off the pot, as they say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they, uh, you know, because it's not like a ton has changed. Uh, Hawaii's opened up a little bit more, but you know, it's at that point where they can't drag it out any longer, and they're hoping that they're still going to get some travel from there. So I guess that's where we're at, you know. Yeah, it's good to see that, but it's just these numbers were were fascinating to me. My favorite part of Las Vegas being the ninth island is when I go to Hawaii, just how much like joy the Hawaiians get out of you being from Las Vegas. You know, you'll you'll say I'm from Las Vegas and then they'll all have their stories about where they stay and they come and you get really great service. They they tend to love people from Las Vegas too, so uh, it's always good, but the fact that this is a well, really like, interesting. That's well, that's like the question always: like, where do you uh, go to vacation if you live in paradise already? Like, that's the joke. I yeah. guess you go to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, and and they love it. I mean, if you see if you see people uh, Hawaiian people's faces light up when you say you're from Las Vegas, but uh, definitely next time you're on your Hawaiian trip, use this little bit of uh, trivia to kind of impress people. Tell them that there's more Hawaiians in Las Vegas than there are in Maui. I think that will uh, that will be an impressive uh, party trick to, to drop off uh, there. And again, if you're in Vegas and you're not finding great Hawaiian food, you're not seeking it out, you should do it because Hawaiian food is the bomb and we have some great places, including uh, over in California, uh, that has uh, that really great Hawaiian restaurant on the second floor. I can't remember the name, uh, but I love it. So love Hawaiian culture. Glad to see, glad to hear that. Let's p- let's pivot to something a little bit. Uh, more serious for as just Ross a second. As from friends, pivot, pivot, pivot. <laughs> Talking about our our buddy uh, Steve Sisolak, the governor. There's not a lot new to report on the COVID uh, stuff, so we're not going to talk too much about it. But the mask mandate remains intact. He did make a small change for large gatherings. If they're in venues that hold four thousand or more people, if they require vaccines for people, then once people are inside, they won't be required to wear a mask. So. It's basically giving private industry the ability for these large events to require masks or to require vaccines so that they won't require masks. The Raiders have already signed on, AEG. Um, MGM has said that they're gonna require all their new employees to have masks. Uh, we're seeing more and more news and I expect that as we see more, you know, more of these companies come out and say they're gonna require vaccines, that pretty much my guess is for entertainment in Las Vegas going forward, you're going to require a vaccine. That certainly seems to be what uh, what they're going for here. Yeah, you know, we talked about it on this week's podcast in a little more detail. Similar things in Detroit. Uh, Chappelle show was just in the city and you had to get a testing at their testing site like a couple blocks away just hours before the show to be able to get in. And if you showed your vac- vaccination card, you could take off your mask as well. So I think you're going to see this popping up all across the country. You know, we've seen... San Francisco roll out similar things, New Orleans, uh, which I think we're going to talk about a little bit later, and as well as like New York City and stuff to get to do indoor dining, you have to show it. So I think that's, you know, Vegas is just the next one in line that's going to do similar stuff and it will kind of expand from there, I think, over the, over time. Yeah, New Orleans is an interesting case because Harrah's there is requiring vaccines, although that is a mandate of the city, I believe. So it's not a, a voluntary. Yeah, it's uh, for all time. All restaurants, bars, everything is is the requirement now. And Harris just happens to fall under that umbrella. So they're the first casino to to have to uh, require a vaccination to get in and everything like that. Yeah, it'd be a slippery slope here in Vegas. It'd be really crazy to, to try to enforce that. I don't think that's going to happen. But um, certainly, uh, Sisolak carved out this exception for large events. Uh, the Golden Knights, I don't believe, have announced if they're going to require it for their games. They're not in season right now, but the Raiders have already said this. Uh, my guess is that Sisolak had already worked with the, the large entertainment providers uh, on this policy, and they all knew uh, what was going to happen, and um, they're all kind of comfortable with it. Uh, the good news for a fan experience is if you do get to go to one of these games, I guess if you are vaccinated, uh, you won't have to wear a mask. Children will be an exception. They'll be allowed to go. Uh, if you're not, you know, children under 12 who cannot get the vaccine, they'll be required to wear masks. So at least, you know, it's not breaking up families and all of that. But uh, mask mandate probably here for a while. That's what this tells me because they're carving out this exception. You don't make an exception to something that's going away next week. So uh, my guess is the masks will be here through the entire fall. <laughs> whether you like them or, or not. But uh, thankfully, I was just on the strip this weekend uh, for my son's 21st birthday. 
and masks didn't uh, do anything to take away from the fun of that. And uh, we got to stay at uh, Resorts World. And Mark, a reader slash listener slash viewer, somebody in our Patreon community on Miles to Memories, gave my son and I a suite, a, a Crockford's $1,500 a night, one bedroom, beautiful suite uh, for his birthday. It was, a, it was a great time, and he definitely enjoyed it. Finally, we found the room in the Crockford's that's worth the, the name, right? You know, that actually <laughs> has the, the, the color scheme you see in the lobby and... It looks, you know, plush and nice versus the stuff we've seen for the standard room. Uh, so it's cool that you got to go in there. I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, makes me want to book a room because they owe me a suite for walking me on that first night. But I'm not really all that tempted either. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to John, uh, who is our uh, a good friend of the site, who who decided to he he had a bad experience earlier uh, when they opened, and he was in town on a different trip. And they had given him one night in the suite for free, and he decided he didn't want to switch hotels. So he was going to let me film it, and then he just said, why don't you take it? And that was uh, incredible. We talked more in detail on the podcast this week, the MTM Vegas podcast, about the full experience and thoughts and stuff like that. But we had a great weekend. I, I stayed in Conrad. I was nice enough to let my son stay in the suite uh, <laughs> as much as that killed me. Oh, my God, it was hard. But uh, I did get to experience uh, the suite. And, um, yeah, I mean, my resorts world – opinions. I, I talked about this at the podcast. They've changed a little bit over time. Uh, the more I've gotten to experience the property, I've now experienced all the hotels there. And uh, unfortunately, while I still like the place, my view has certainly, uh, I don't know, been a little tarnished, I guess, over time, um, as, as I've shared here and on the podcast over, you know, over my various experiences. But it was a good time there and also got to do da Barry's Downtown Prime uh, for his birthday night, which was great to experience that. Uh, everything I expected, very expensive, but quality was was high there as well. And we did Bellagio for uh, for his second night. Used my American Express Platinum, uh, two hundred dollar credit for fine hotels and resorts. So we got a hundred dollar food and beverage, free breakfast, all of that stuff. And we got to stay in one of those old unrenovated rooms with a bathtub, uh, just to to give all those people oh triggering people on the bathtub. <laughs> Triggered. So, yeah. So Bellagio was fun. I mean, it was a fun weekend. I think if you're going to turn 21 in Vegas, getting to stay in a suite at the hottest new five-star top-end hotel on the Strip uh, plus Bellagio, I think that's pretty good. So I, I, I pat myself on the back for putting that one together. Yeah, it worked out well for him. And it, you said uh, the suite was going for like 1500 bucks a night. So he can always say, hey, for my 21st birthday, my dad hooked me up with a $1,500 suite. So there, he can brag about that to all his friends. <laughs> yep, exactly. And the price was right for me. Um, certainly... Uh, I'm glad to finally get to experience it. Uh, and I don't zero. have to. I don't have to. Yeah, to to pay to stay there. I can concentrate my paid stays more on Win or or elsewhere. Uh, Cosmo, we stopped by there this week, and Jasmine found out that she has three free nights as a comp there, which they had never sent to her in email or mail. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, only during the week, but uh, I guess that's next on my list. I gotta I gotta fill out those Bellagio Fountain View shots that I have now that I got it from the Bellagio. And I was telling you on the podcast, I've stayed at just about every hotel with fountain views, but nothing is quite as good as being at the Bellagio. You're getting that straight on view of the fountains. That's really the iconic Vegas and really cool to, to experience that. It's been a while since I stayed there. As you know, my last stay there, there was hairs in the bed. It was really a bad experience. Uh, thankfully, Bellagio much better this time around. And uh, they learned how I to wear a hairnet it. this time. They learned how to wear a hairnet, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just, just good, good all around and, uh, just a great 21st birthday fun to be on the strip. As far as crowd levels go, I know people are constantly worried about that. I think it's about the same as it's been the last few weeks, which is down just, this is purely anecdotal, but just seems like it's down from where it was about a month ago, but still busy on the weekends. Still a lot of people. If you're like got used to seeing Vegas during COVID, like last year in 2020, it still doesn't look anything like that. There's still people everywhere. Um, you know, you're not getting a, a distanced experience. So just just keep that in mind. But uh, lots of fun stuff. Yeah, experiencing Vegas in style. Had, glad to be able to do that. He did lose his phone at some point, and he did end up and all his out. money. Yeah, and he lost all his money, and he ended up passed out on the bed at about eight o'clock at night on Sunday night. Um, so yeah, it was it was good. It was good. Good stories to tell and uh, good family memories, I guess. Uh, in in a truly weird coomer style because uh that's just the way we do it i guess so 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like an awesome weekend that anybody listening would love to have, much less a 21-year-old. So you did it right. He lost a phone. That means he had a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm sure daddy, dad's going to pick up the tab on that one, you know, because he kind of was to blame for it. So <laughs> What? Getting, I got him some old fashions at the uh, at the chandelier bar at Cosmo. You know, he sat down yeah, and he see? was playing, and he got his old fashions. And so, let's blame the bartenders at the chandelier bar at Cosmo because those old fashions did him. Hopefully, in and, and... hopefully, he had insurance on his uh, credit card that he pays his phone bill with, and that that will take care of it. There you go. How about that? No, but it was an older phone, so uh, time for the upgrade. Survive. Yeah, he was he was kind of happy. He's like, oh, I kind of needed a new phone anyway. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, it's a good story to tell, nonetheless. One other thing we noticed this weekend being in casinos is the changing face of the casinos. We're seeing more and more stories now. We've talked about this, about the stadium gaming. Uh, we talked about it more in depth on the podcast, but it's just happening. Uh, the stadium gaming is just everywhere now. Like It's crazy to see how quickly these installations are going up. Bellagio has one, too, that I had not noticed before. You know, These are the kind of centralized gaming things if you want to know more about it check out this week's podcast but we saw that seeing more of the spill gate skill based gaming your favorite claw machine now in use at mgm grand so we'll see that more uh hopefully more everywhere i think those are fun whether they're skill based or not i'm kind of excited to see these different wish, types of games uh, which was skill based way. i've spent thousands of dollars <laughs> prepping for this my whole life but, but you know real claw games aren't skill based either they're all well they too. are but they're fixed that that only has enough tensile strength to pick it up every so often so you still have to have like the skill the time that it is able to pick up something that you actually get it because it could be like one out of five one out of ten one out of fifteen so the trick is like on those games we're getting arcade nerdy here but you watch people play them and you see how often it looks like it can pick up and then you kind of count down and you'd be like those uh, old slot ladies that hop in after you you play for an hour or two and steal your jackpot so that's what you do with claw games too have you ever like just kept staying at a machine just because that, that lady's there and you don't want to give her the machine and then you end up losing more money <laughs> because you're just you're just being like protective of that machine um, certainly have done that. There's nothing worse than the old slot lady. And you can just like see the look on her face. Like she's just waiting. And then just when she takes over somebody's machine, like the look of joy that she gets, that she, that she got that. And yeah, I, 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 uh, I know there's people that make, uh, some decent money doing that. So, you know, I, I don't play slots that much. So not, I just never really played a, a role, but I totally would. Um, uh, if I'm, if I've been putting money in, I'll get upset. I would get upset if somebody hops in and wins even though it's totally their right if you leave. So I could see myself just funneling more money in, like, here you go, go go, go to the ATM for me, go get me money, I'm not getting up, I will not leave this machine. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, as far as the changing face of casinos, we people like to say we like to, to crap on Caesars all the time. Uh, not to crap on them, but uh, the poker room at Planet Hollywood's gone, these machines are replacing it, Link has already removed tons of table games, they're replacing it. This is certainly, uh, it seems like the future of what, of what they're doing there. Uh, we also have seen some anecdotal evidence that they've devalued their points in some way, right? I mean, uh, it used to be, you know, one cent, one point, and it depended on, you know, whether they own the venue, like if, like at non Caesar's own restaurants, you would get less value for your points. But we've been seeing like some places have changed the, the value, right? Where you're getting less for your Caesars reward points. Yeah, so there was always like the two two points for one cent at non-Caesars properties. And the trick was kind of a workaround. I'm, I'm not sure if it still works, but was to comp it back to your, or bill it back to your room when you when you ate at these places. And then when you paid at the end of the checkout, you could use your points at one cent per point. Uh, so you're seeing some restaurants now and it looks like you need like a hieroglyphics to figure it out at Caesars website because it will be like two stars is one cent per one point and Four stars is two cent, and now there's a one and a half points per one cent that they added in. I don't remember that ever being there before, so I think that's a newer thing this year. So they're just like you know muddying the water. It still works. Uh, hotel rooms is still one cent per point. I'm not sure if billing back to your room still works or is a way to work around it or not. So that's something we'll have to test out. Or if you've done it, let us know in the comments uh, so we can update everybody. But yeah, it just seems like it's all over the place. And depending on the restaurant, if it's a nicer, nicer restaurant, you're probably going to get less value. Or if they don't own it, you're going to definitely get less value. So that's just kind of annoying because you don't really know. And when you go into a place, you just assume, hey, this is inside the link. Like it's going to it's owned by them. Right. You know, what am I 
who cares? Let's go and use them. And then when they go to redeem them, you're like, oh, wait a second. So that's what's tough. There's no sign at the door when you walk in saying, this is how many points you're going to get. You have to like kind of ask when you get there and then you look cheap, <laughs> which, yeah. uh, you know, is annoying. Yeah, it's I mean, the whole thing with the Caesars rewards is annoying and we say it every week. But just remember, this is a different company and we're, we're trying to keep a close look on this. Um, we've been looking at these sort of devaluations for a couple weeks and Mark's kind of dived in. Like you said, their website is so confusing. Uh, you, you know, you dove in to try to figure out where you get what and they they've just made the, the program so confusing as far as this goes. Uh, but just keep that in mind that your points may not be worth what you thought. And thankfully, at least for at least for hotels, and hopefully that trick is still around where you can where you can charge and get the one cent uh, value, but it's not given uh, across the board. Uh, just more changes, more things to keep in mind. I really kind of interested to see like a year from now, two years from now, how Caesars looks, uh, what properties they still have, and then how they've reshaped the company because uh, top to bottom, I mean, they're really redoing everything there. So uh, it's really interesting uh, to see that. And one last thing to talk about, Mark, because I know you love to crap on our hopes and dreams of getting a high-speed rail to Las Vegas. Uh, and just <laughs> every, every week we talk about it. But Brightline has been trying to get the funding for this $5 billion train. They've tried to issue bonds uh, in both Nevada and California to varying levels of success. They had bonds issued in California or the ability to sell bonds. Not enough of them sold. And then the state took the funding away to give it for affordable housing. So yeah, it's still a big, big struggle here for this high-speed rail. Who knows if it's going to happen? Now, they bought their fair, station though. I only uh, rip on ca driving cars and tunnels. The train, I totally think it should happen. It, it just stinks that it doesn't make it all the way to LA if it ever happens. You know, you still have to drive through the mountains and everything to get there. But I think it makes too much sense. How much, you know, especially this year, a lot of the traffic is coming from California and we've seen pictures of the highway still packed up even after the mask mandate because people are still leaving California. You know, that's their life right now, especially in LA. They have masks everywhere, indoor, outdoor, everything. So they, they're still flocking to Vegas to get that experience. And a train just makes too much sense. You know, it's like Philly to Atlantic City. There's a train there because a lot of people go. So why wouldn't you? And it just, it's, it sucks that they're struggling so much, but it is good. They, they did get that plot of land. That's a good location and would work well. Hopefully they make it all happen. Yeah. I mean, the key to this is they're not selling the bonds like they should be. There's no investors coming in and buying these bonds. There isn't a lot of confidence in this project, probably because it doesn't go all the way to LA and hopefully it can get the funding to do that. Um, but California hasn't even been willing to spend the money to widen I-15 to three lanes all the way through. And so that's why every weekend you see these huge backups in traffic. Instead of widening the freeway, there's a couple spots where it goes back down to two lanes, which create these bottlenecks. And they're not even willing to put uh, financing for that. Uh, I know a recent budget, they sort of pushed it off even more. Whereas Nevada has been really, really upset about this, trying to get funding to get I-15 uh, widened, obviously, because... It's good for for the economy. So I think this, the train would do well, but it has to go to L.A. They ha it's still like 15, 20 years away from if California can ever get their high speed rail done. But uh, this company, I mean, they are marching towards finishing their train project in Florida or at least getting the, the uh, right now. It goes from Miami to uh, Palm Beach and it's going to go all the way to Orlando. That I think it will be finished next year. Um, and that's already heavily more traffic in Orlando. Great. <laughs> no, the, the train should help. Well, should yeah, help, I would help say, but that. more people, because then it'll be easier for people to get there, which yeah. Orlando is already getting kind of busy. But I will say, add more lanes to the highway. No matter how many lanes you had, it, it seems like traffic just finds a way to fill it. You go through Atlanta, they have eight lanes on each side, and it's still dead stop. Like, how many lanes yeah. can you add? What, but the problem uh, is having three and then going to two and then yeah. back to three and then two. It's those creating those nobody bottlenecks. Nobody knows how to merge properly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just, just the, the crush of traffic, because yeah. during the week, it's fine. But I mean, there are definitely some challenges. And if somebody can solve this problem, there's always going to be millions of people traveling back and forth, um, certainly as long as Las Vegas is important. So uh, this train does have a chance. For everybody who says that this company will never get it done, all I say is that in Florida, they have. And I acknowledge that they have huge challenges. Who knows if it will happen or not? But this is a, a company that, you know, Hopefully they can they can pull it off. They need to be able to sell those bonds. They need to be able to get the money. And uh, 
I'm not going to hold my breath, but I do hope it happens. And I do like high <laughs> had, speed rail. We had a similar thing in Detroit. They wanted to put in a light rail, you know, from the, basically the, the very bottom of downtown, like right at the river, all the way out to the suburbs, which is like 14 miles of track, 13 miles of track. And they started out with like a one or two mile area. And then it was supposed to expand each year after that and, and go out and it did not work so well. They put in the, the track around the downtown area, but these, these run on basically the streets. So it's not its own lane. And it was just like, you think about this. Okay. So you're going to get stuck behind cars. You're going to get stuck in traffic. It doesn't move you any faster. It doesn't really help anything. It should have been a dedicated lane if they really wanted it to work. Sometimes you'll wait 30 minutes for one to show up and then there'll be three in a row just because of the way traffic worked out. So Hopefully they don't make similar mistakes. <laughs> I don't know. Let's hope, but it, it will, it'll be good to, to get it. It's good to see that it's starting. They did buy that land for the station, so hopefully uh, it all works out. But let us know what you guys think about any of these topics, whether it be the changing faces of the casinos or you know what you think about the Resorts World uh, rooms or Circa's four AAA diamond rating. You're going to give a thumbs up to that. Yeah, there you go. So let us know in the comments. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think. And check out the MTM Vegas podcast. You can find all of our Vegas content at mtmvegas.com. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys next time. See you next week.